Dana, what you up to, man? Dude, I'm just playing with some Legos. Why? Well, I thought it could help me figure out how to rebuild my life. You're going to need some bigger pieces than that. Hey, and welcome to the Thumbbrook Takeaway. I'm Tanner Treffin, joined by our worship pastor, Dakota Smith. How you doing, man? Good. Good to be here. Good to be here as well. We're talking about the message from this past Sunday, the rebuild, as we started our Arise series with Pastor Joey. Yeah, we're diving into Ezra and Nehemiah. I thought it was cool. Joey said it was um, it used to be one book, so you can't really have one without the other. You kind of got to teach out of both at the same time. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, I'm excited about the series. Um, it's all about rebuilding your life, um, and I need a lot of help with that, apparently. <laughs> uh, but don't we all? We all got areas we could uh, rebuild or strengthen or make even better for the Lord, so it's uh, exciting to dive in. Um, I was excited what you did with the YouTube page of how you can go back and you can look through our journey through the Bible up into Ezra and Nehemiah real easy as you go in there. So, yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, thanks for subscribing. Yep. We got everything on there from uh, Genesis up through, we just finished First and Second Chronicles coming through Easter. So, and then once we finish this series, Ezra and Nehemiah will get added to the end of that as well. So, yeah. There we go. Um, so one point he made uh, right at the back is uh, we all should ask the question, what do you need to strengthen or rebuild in your life? And so just be praying on that, thinking about that as we're in this series. He talked about how they, I think, rebuilt the walls uh, in Nehemiah for 52 days. And so we're going to be in the series for roughly around that same time. And so let's rebuild some things for the Lord. Um, and how when you're rebuilding, you need, you need the hand of God uh, on your life. You need his help. And uh, you need to believe that God has a plan for your life. Yeah, one of the things that really stood out to me was um, when Joey said that you have to really need to do things God's way, that to partner uh, with the Holy Spirit in these things, that don't just be like, oh, I need to do this or that thing, and just try to do it in your own willpower and your own strength, um, but just fully relying on God and choosing His way uh, over over our own because His ways are greater his thoughts are above our thoughts and um but just praying and seeking about those those areas that need to be uh rebuilt or maybe just uh remodeled touched up Mm -hmm. whatever in between um so i thought that was good yeah that was good and um on on the next point you talked about the why um you gotta have this great focus of what is the why of why you're doing what you're doing and he talked about for them is they felt called by God to do it, um, and it was for the Lord. And uh, we, when we and Joey were discussing this, I said, you should call it the double cry. You need to have a why. That's the double cry. And he's like, what's the double cry? And it's like the double cry is something that you would cry about because, like, when you think about it, you want to do it so bad, like, it just makes you emotional. Um, and there's such a need there or whatever. But then if at the end of your life, if you never had did it, you would have cried in shame or, like, you know, sadness that you didn't do it. So your cry should give you – your why should be a double cry. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I never thought about it that way. It's interesting. Yeah. It's cool. So you need a plan. Um, now that you know that God has a plan for you and has something for you, you know, you need to take a step, you know, of how you're going to carry this out. And so I think that's just practical. Um, but he, you can have paralysis by over-analysis, mm-hmm. Pastor Joey said. And so I think that's really important. Like, you got to think about it, you know, get counselors, ask people about it. But one of the biggest things is just get started, start something, do something. So. Yeah, that was one of the... Uh, one of the things I wrote down for the, um, just listening to it is that planning is super important, but don't get caught up in the planning. Like you need to get started, get the ball rolling. Um, and talking about the why and, um, just that knowing that, especially if what needs to be rebuilt, most of the things in our lives, it's not only like if it's a physical thing, like, uh, your marriage or a relationship with whoever or, whatever you're going through, but it has like the physical aspect and like the emotional side of it as well. Like it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, but so, but just knowing that during, while the, you're doing this rebuild that like in the thinking of it as a way of like actually like working on something. Um, Cause I know you were sharing with me how you guys bought a fixer upper house and then you, it was like you, we were student teaching you had uh, you were pregnant, and then you had a newborn, and like you're still working on your house, and it was just a whole bunch of things. And you're like, "This is so much to do." Uh, but Joey was talking about like when you're physically building something that you might cut up your hands. There might, there's going to be sweat, blood, and tears in the rebuild, and I think that can be physical and emotional. Mm-hmm. That you have to like work through the the pain that comes as well um, in the in the working and in the 
the working and the waiting and the rebuilding and everything in between. Um, and I think that kind of goes into the one of the, the next points of the Anticipate uh, the anticipating yeah. the resistance. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, uh, as soon as you start doing anything worthwhile for the Lord, there's going to be some pushback from the devil. He doesn't want you to do anything yep. you know, that matters, that's for sure. Uh, and so I feel like part of the plan needs to be prayer. You need to have that spiritual battle going on because um, the devil is going to be coming after you. And so you need the spiritual protection and, and blessing of the hand of God in your life in prayer. And, uh, yeah, if you want to have add stress to your marriage, get a fixer-upper. Because <laughs> I'm not in construction, and neither is Mary. And so we were YouTubing a lot of things and, you know, doing our best. And, and by the grace of God, actually, COVID was a blessing for us because we had so much going on, and I, I had no time to work on the house, and I was trying to make everything fit. And then when COVID happened, suddenly student teaching stopped, you know, things at church slowed down, and there was just so much time to fit, work in the house. And so that was the grace of God helped us there for sure. Yeah. Sometimes there's, there's blessings when you don't see them coming, um, in the midst of, in the midst of chaos. Um, but yeah, there's like, uh, me and Brittany will do things together, like building furniture or especially like, I don't know, trying to like hang things on the wall or whatever. Like it, I don't, I, I don't ever feel like we're on the same team when we're trying to do something like that. And then we're like, once we get it together, we're like, yes, we did it, teamwork. And then but like the whole time we're like, no, this piece doesn't go there. That doesn't do that. It's too far to the left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> guilty of uh, just being the guy that, uh, I don't need instructions. And then later I'm like, oh, I did it wrong. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so Joey talked about there's four stages um, in this process. That Stage one is you get started great job that's important you need to start to get somewhere and then uh throughout it you need to arise again and keep going and not stopping uh, to finish what you started and then once you're done i thought this is an important one you don't really think about this much but to protect what you've worked so hard to accomplish because even after you've done it the devil wants to come back and steal the win and and you know tear it apart and all that type of stuff yeah something that was interesting to me um i think joey like hit it real quick when he was going through um, these four things is like when he got to finish, he said, when you get done with something, it's really exciting. So also take the time for just a little bit, make sure you celebrate mm-hmm. what you finished. Um, so celebrate it when you finish the rebuild, um, and then, uh, protecting what you built. And I think it honestly, it, I think it, to me, it kind of goes back to like, keep the big mo, you know what I mean? Um, that you, you have this momentum of this, you built this thing back up, everything's going great. So just to sustain that and protect it. Yeah, that, that's huge. Um, I was actually thinking about what Joey said with the protecting. Uh, just yesterday, Mary and I have started a little garden in our backyard of fruit trees. We like fruit trees because it's very low maintenance. Basically, you plant it and just leave it alone, and, <laughs> and it survives. So thank the Lord for that. You don't have to go back and water it too much or anything. And so I like that. Um, and anyways, we have this little grapevine that we brought bought at a hardware store, and uh Basically, our sons have uprooted it and pulled it out of the ground like four or five times. And then I accidentally have stepped on it once. And it survived this whole thing and had little buds popping out of it. But then yesterday, I accidentally stepped on it. (laughs) (laughs) And I ripped off some of the buds or the leaf or whatever. Um, But we had an idea. We have these little like tomato uh, stands. And so we put like an enclosure around it now. So now I won't accidentally step in it. Um, and it has one bud that has survived. And so we're hoping now that we put a protection barrier around it, it will actually survive. But like in our own life, like that we can put boundaries and margin up in our life to protect important things that we don't want to get squashed. Um, yeah, that's I think good. That's practical. practicals. So. Yeah, that's, no, that's a really good, good analogy. I like that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so did you have a kind of takeaway of anything you need to strengthen? In your- yeah, I think, I think my biggest takeaway is just to – one of the biggest things that stuck out to me was just to to do it God's way, but also just to uh, just keep seeking Him and prayer in the areas that um, that need to be worked on, um, to know what His plan is and uh, His direction for it. That it's not just oh we have these grand ideas like as people, and you're like oh I'm gonna fix it by doing this thing, this thing, and this thing, but like. If I just do this, me and my wife aren't on the same page. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. I feel like communication is key. Doing it God's way is key. Um, just, yeah. So, God's way is my biggest takeaway. It's good. Yeah, that's it's always so important. And uh, for me, um, it was just the thought of, like, 
kind of what you're saying, but just remaining steadfast, like continuing to put God first, do it his way, but don't get discouraged when I meet resistance, but continue to be faithful even in the resistance. And that's actually what we're going to lean into uh, this coming Sunday about uh, being a man of God arising and being steadfast in the midst of opposition as we continue uh, looking at Ezra chapter 4, 5, and 6. So it's going to be good. That's awesome. I'm excited for this uh, the Sunday coming up. It's going to be good continuing this series. Yeah, church. So uh, what's your takeaway? Thanks so much for listening. Let's apply and grow together. And uh, God bless you.